This use of play is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello It's Tuesday, September 8th, and time for the Barbados to the evening update. I'm Fernanda Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. There must be a national effort in tackling firearms crime in the country. So says Attorney General Adriel Brafwit as the Royal Barbados Police Force investigates the latest shooting incident, which left two young men nursing gunshot injuries after gunmen opened fire on a group in Denton Road in Grisettes last night. The minister says the blame game must stop in order to effectively combat the the illicit use of firearms and ammunition in the country. He made the comments at a seminar by the United Nations Center for Peace, Disarmament and Development in the Latin America and the Caribbean this morning at the Marriott. It is not a blame game as seen to have been uh, portrayed in, in the press recently and elsewhere. The reality is, is that firearms can only come to the country um, by sea or by air. Um, and those of us who have responsibility needs to examine our practices to see where the weaknesses um, and try to eliminate um, such weaknesses. Um, whether it be that we need to have um, more careful scrutiny of, of cargo coming into the country, whether it means that we need to have more careful scrutiny of yachts coming into the country, whether it means that we need to have more scrutiny of our own crafts, um, our own shipping vessels, uh, uh, our own fishing vessels going in and out of Barbados. Um, whatever the weaknesses that we've identified um, is not a question of, of casting blame, it's a question of how do we identify those, those weaknesses um, and, plug, and plug the gaps. That, that's our responsibility. He also revealed that the second draft of the firearms deals is on the cards for later this year. We want to strengthen um, how we treat the, the firearms in, in Barbados. We recognize that there are some gaps in the, in the existing legislation. Uh, two years ago, uh, for example, we wanted to move ahead uh, with, with the marking of all firearms in Barbados. Um, and some individuals resisted and said that we didn't have the legislative authority. We've gone ahead with the marking of all of our own, and when I say our, I mean the government's own firearms, um, and it is our intention to to address um, that issue um, with the new legislation, which, as I said, um, we will have in Parliament by, by the end of the year. The UN project advisor told the gathering that her office is willing to partner with the Caribbean in tackling this worrying problem. So this project, what we, look, what we are seeking to do across the region is to help establish sound national operational forensic ballistic system and effective information management and sharing of forensic ballistics information with government, regionally within the Caribbean. A political scientist in Barbados says the results of the Trinidad and Tobago general election show a shift in Caribbean politics. Dr. Tennyson Joseph tells Barbados today a trend has emerged during the last few years of one-term governments or the re-election of gov governments with weak majorities. A general trend we're seeing in the Caribbean is, is towards the rejection of incumbent governments and a number of explanations for that, but the main one being the kind of difficult economic situation in which our countries find themselves and voters are electing parties into, into office with very high expectations and very often those expectations are not met. And so the trend we've been seeing um, are basically towards the one-term governments. There are very few of those since around 2006. There are very few countries that have bucked the trend, Barbados being one of them. So most of the elections have been following from 2006 right down. You have one-term governments or you have governments that are being elected on very, very narrow majorities. So Barbados is an example of a narrow majority. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a narrow majority. The only exception to that trend towards one-term governments and narrow majorities 
is the, is the, Dominica, the Dominica case. And he says the phenomenon clearly shows disillusionment by the electorate with the incumbent government. So what the voters do, they just vote one in, it disappoints and they vote it out. They vote one in, it disappoints and they vote, they vote it out. That is not in the past, before the past elections, you had three-term governments. And then in a country like San Jose, you had the governance of one party for three, for three to four terms. Trinidad for three to four terms. And Tigger for three to four terms and so forth. Barbados and Jamaica already had a kind of two-term swing. But even the two-term swing has come to an end because when Owen Africa got, got three terms and, and, and P.J. Patterson got four terms, the trend was broken. But after that, so roughly since 2006, you've been seeing, or let's say the early days, roughly in 2006, we ha you have a, a pattern of what I call the rejection of incumbents in Caribbean German elections. Meantime, Finance Minister Chris Sinclair is sending congratulations to Dr. Keith Rowley on his victory, albeit with a caution. Dr. Rowley's Opposition People's National Movement was swept into power yesterday, winning 23 of the 41 seats in Parliament, and he is set to take the oath of office tomorrow. In his message, Minister Sinclair reminded Rowley that there was no magic wand in fixing the issues of the country, adding that a lot of readjustments to policies may be necessary in order to help the economy. The new law aimed at restructuring Clico International Life will benefit more than policyholders. That's the view of Government Senator Andre Rowell. He told the Senate during debate on the bill yesterday that the legislation will also boost the country's agriculture sector. This single straw, I believe, will go on to reap dividends for this country because eventually it will see a number of persons uh, being employed in back in the agricultural sector and you would also see the production in agriculture being increased because Clico is one of the largest landowners in Barbados and if we are serious in terms of a sugar industry in Barbados we need to have those lands back into production producing cane, um, producing cane so that we will have a viable sugar industry. So we need to have the finances allocated so that those lands can go back into production. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean developments now, Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, shuts a crossing in the state of Zulia and declares an emergency in three of its cities. The move comes as he extended a partial border shutdown with Colombia. President Maduro says the border area has been infiltrated by Colombian paramilitaries and criminal gangs. And as such, he has ordered another 3,000 troops to the area in a crime and crackdown. And finally, a large dust storm hits parts of the Middle East, claiming lives and hospitalizing dozens of people. The dust spread to large areas of the country today, affecting Syria, parts of Lebanon, Israel, Turkey and Cyprus. More in this BBC report. This is dust in the atmosphere from the storms, as you can see quite clearly. It left a covering of yellow sand across many of the major cities. Officials were warning people to stay indoors, if at all possible. We understand at least 80 people were taken to hospital with respiratory problems. Now, the storms are still continuing, and you can see from the latest satellite picture, this is the dust in the atmosphere as far west as uh, northern Egypt into Cairo and also into Cyprus, where we understand understand some of the flights there have been disrupted. However, it does look as though the weather story slowly improves. 
And that's news, but for the very latest, log on to www.fabulousstoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.